Hi, my name is Cairo. I'm a South London-based artist. I'm currently studying my second year of fine art at Chelsea College of Arts, um, and I work primarily in oil paints. In terms of background, I am half Galician, half Colombian. Uh, I was born and raised in Spain, and I emigrated to the UK when I was nine years old. Being mixed and only growing up with one of my cultures has really impacted the way I work, the way I see the world. My upbringing has meant that I have this constant need to to connect back to my roots. So on my Colombian side, I never got to, to visit Colombia and I didn't get to meet my Colombian family until I was much older. This has left me wanting to explore my culture and connect to these roots through my work. So. I ended up having quite a strong interest in things like ethnobotany because medicinal plants are something that are very interesting to me and I feel as though they have quite a strong history and significance within Latin America. My emigration to the UK also impacted my work a lot. I came here when I was nine and for a few years I was able to visit in summer but eventually there were years where I wasn't able to go. And from the moment I moved here, I had this strong homesickness and it never truly left me. I do still feel very homesick now. And that's left me wanting to re-explore the culture that I grew up with. This has meant that a lot of my recent work looks at everyday scenes from back home. I'm very interested in the mundane, the, the everyday things that are just so typical of back home that no one really pays mind to but every time I visit back I think about how much I miss all these little moments that I don't get to experience the same anymore. This is always the hardest question for me to answer. Who are your biggest influences? Who's your biggest influences? Because really I feel like I influence myself. I feel like the world around me as a whole, my upbringing, my experiences, I internalise all of this and then that contextualises my practice. In terms of paintings, in terms of work, I've never looked at anyone else's work and thought, I want mine to look like theirs. I've always wanted my paintings, my work to look like my own, to have my own unique essence. I feel like in every single one of my pieces, I leave a little bit of my soul, I leave a little bit of myself, a bit of energy in there. And I think that that's not something... You can imitate from one person to the other. I don't feel like there is anyone that I could resemble because there's no one that could resemble me. So I guess in short, without sounding too up my own, you know, my biggest influence is myself. I'm currently working on a short format artist book that is sort of recounting my experiences as a queer artist, as an immigrant and as a mixed person and how this all informs my practice. I am also working on some new series which will be coming to Parallax Art Fair in London, as well as a show in mid-June, all of which I'm super, super, super excited about. I think as an artist, finding your inner voice, your real voice, is one of the biggest challenges you're gonna face because in order to sell work, you're often told you have to be marketable where your art has to be palatable people have to like it and so finding somewhere where you're not stifling yourself your voice or stunting your growth but where you're also able to sell, sell works it's not an easy balance to find and oftentimes you don't want to find the balance you want the work that is the real you to sell I think that's something that's very difficult because as much as a lot of us just want to create just to create and I think that's that's the beauty of being an artist just being able to make you need to live off something and if it's not if you don't want to do things like hospitality or a nine to five job making a living out of art can be quite difficult and it shouldn't be and i think it's a shame that we have to face this kind of hardship as artists because from my point of view and from my opinion we would have nothing without art without paintings music murals entertainment there's we are nothing without art we live for art we live for culture without people who are able to make these the world's just going to get grayer and bleaker and that's quite honestly not something i want to see happen i'm very tempted to say that i wouldn't give any advice to my younger self because 
she had to go through everything that she did to become the person that I am today. She had to, to make all the mistakes she made. She had to try all the things she tried. And she had to be as stubborn as she was to get to to the place where I am today, where I'm in the space where I can make this interview, where I can speak to people, where I can make work. The only thing I could say to her is keep going. Stay true to yourself and keep being stubborn and just keep pushing because it's going to get you places. <laughs> I'd say the most unconventional thing or medium that I've ever sort of tried has been an interactive installation. So before I started my bachelor's at UAL, I did a two-year course at UCA in Epsom and during our second year, we were tasked with group work for one of the units and we had to come up with a sort of interactive uh, installation, which was a play on scale. So we made a giant print stick and then used one of the mannequins from the fashion department and we hung it upside down and we put the print stick sort of next to it and then we had paint that people could step on and walk around so you had the sort of scale of human feet you had the scale of a smaller mannequin and then suddenly a print stick that was giant it's not a path I've continued down but it was very very fun to try things out and just you know see what I like see what I don't like and the kind of things that can come from something with which isn't necessarily oil painting in terms of what i like to listen to when i'm in the zone when i'm painting i very rarely like silence but sometimes i do sometimes i need silence but most often i tend to have um, old spanish music or for contrast <laughs> i tend to 99 of the time i have the block europe coming from my speakers or from my headphones 99% of the time I think I'm in the top 1% of listeners I don't know what it is about them but they just really get me into this creative zone I think it's because they have so much passion and love for music and for what they do they're so sure and certain of themselves that I think that kind of then transmutes to me and helps me paint and just get out there and not doubt myself I guess if I was talking influences a little bit would be them even though they're not painters I guess their attitude or the way they approach things with so much sureness and security in themselves I think that that is definitely something that does influence me and my work the best reaction someone has had to my work has been at an art fair I was selling one of my chalk parcel drawings so it's this depiction of Aphrodite in her bath of the statue that's in the British Museum and I drew her from behind I really like the way she was posed and so this older man comes into the art fair. It's very local, very small fair. And I can just see his reaction looking at everything. He's giving people looks. It's not looking great. <laughs> and then he passes my stall. And he looks at that drawing and he said, Hmm, I just can't get behind photography being an art form. It's just not art for me. I'm very sorry. And as nasty as his comment was, the face he made when I told him it was a drawing was worth every second of listening to him talk about what art is and what art isn't it was fantastic and honestly one of my most satisfying moments so even though it was initially quite a negative reaction it ended up being one of the best reactions I've had to my work because I was feeling short of myself of my skills of my drawing I, w I left that market still walking on clouds <laughs> people have told me that to them my work speaks of home that it makes them feel like it could be their own home, it could be their own grandparents, their own mothers. They feel this domestic feeling, this, this feeling of being safe, of being living in childhood, of being back in their homelands. I think it's been a very universal feeling. As much as my paintings and my work is always open for interpretation and for people's opinions, my viewers always tend to come to the same conclusion of it feels like home. I think they can see that I'm still trying to find myself, that I'm still trying to find who I am. And they see a little bit of that same journey that they're going through, that they're experiencing in my work. And I always find that life is made up of, of all the little moments of every day, the little coffees, the laughter. And I think that's something that people seem to stop and take away from my work. That in loving the little moments, in loving the mundane, in loving home memories they're falling in love with life and that's something that always brings me a lot of joy and a lot of happiness to hear that that people can see 
a little bit of themselves and their journey and their home and things they love in my work. I'm just, it makes me very happy. <laughs> thank you very much for interviewing me and thank you very much for listening to my thoughts and my ranting. And I hope that anyone listening is able to take out any motivation, any advice, anything for their own practice and journey. My Instagram is at Art Caro, A-R-T-T-C-A-R-O. My website is the same, but .co.uk. And I will be at SB Art Studios on the 16th of June and Parallax Art Fair from the 7th to the 9th of July. All other events are going to be outlined on my Instagram, my website, any last minute bits, opening nights, it's all on there. So follow my Instagram, drop me a message and I'll see you guys soon.